In uh, section 17.9, we're going to discuss the Doppler effect. And so this is a really interesting um, effect, which you can experience um, most anywhere in our modern-day society. Um, and it's also kind of interesting because now we're talking about how to measure sound waves in a different frame of reference. So we're going to break it up into two different ways. One of them is the source of the sound is moving. Um, and the person who's listening is not moving or stationary, or the person who is detecting it is moving and the source is stationary. So let's start with the um, uh, moving detector. And uh, stationary source. Okay. So in this case, I have a source, S, which is not moving, and it's emitting sound waves so that they travel. So this would really be like the first sound wave that's emitted, the second, the third, and they're traveling out. And now we have a detector, D, which is moving, let's say, toward the source with some velocity, V sub D. So if that is the case, um, then what the observer, what the detector is really going to observe <clears throat> is that as it gets closer to the sound, now the sound is moving with some velocity v, that those two things kind of will add or subtract depending on the direction of the detector. So in this case, um, the uh, let's take a look at it. The frequency um, that is measured by the um, the frequency that's measured by the detector f prime so the detector measured frequency we're going to calculate it by taking the speed that's measured and divide it by the wavelength of the sound so if I take the the frequency that is measured, and now we have the velocity, but the velocity that the detector is measuring of the sound is the original speed of the sound. Um, uh, let's see, are we moving toward or away? Um, if we're moving um, toward it, then you would have this plus the speed of the detector divided by the wavelength. Now these speeds, um, if we um, think about it, then the, oh, I'm sorry, the wavelength, the wavelength of sound is just the um, speed divided by the frequency when it's stationary. So this is the stationary case, or the rest frame of the source. So if I was to put that in, then I would get a measured frequency by the detector, which is equal to the speed of sound plus the speed of the detector, <coughs> divided by the speed of the sound, divided by the frequency. So I can rearrange this, and I can get a free measured frequency which is equal to the frequency of the stationary sound wait uh, stationary source um, times the speed of the sound plus the speed of the detector divided by the speed of sound so that's if the detector is moving toward the source what if it's moving away well now if it's moving away the only thing I'm changing here is how the speed is actually um, measured. So in that case, what I would do is change the frequency, the or take the speed of the sound waves moving, and then subtract off the speed of the detector. And so now I have basically these two cases where I have the um, plus or minus, where uh, um, yeah, so we have so I have either so I can write it down as one equation, where I have the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the detector, 
divided by the speed of sound. <clears throat> and so in this case, I get the plus, which is moving toward, and we get minus, which is moving away. So I have two different cases. But the interesting thing is that now if I was to look at the measurement, um, so let's take into account the moving toward. So in that case, I get V plus VD over V, which is going to be greater than 1, which means that the measured frequency is greater than the um, the frequency of the sound when everything is just stationary. So which means I now observe a higher pitch. It sounds like a much higher um, uh, whistle than, than it would otherwise. If I'm moving away, then what you get is V minus VD over V, which is now less than 1 or the measured frequency is less than the frequency, and now we get a lower pitch. And that's what gives us that characteristic change of the siren sound. When there's, say, like an ambulance, which is racing towards you, when it's coming towards you, it sounds very high pitch, and then when it moves away from you, it starts to feel lower. And so you get this change in the siren sound, which is very characteristic of, say, living in the city, and then you hear a police car and ambulance drive by, and then it starts high, and then it, the pitch goes much lower. <clears throat> okay, so now let's take the other case of a moving source and a stationary detector. Okay, so in that case now, what we have is the source is moving with some speed v sub s and so um, and the detector is sitting out here what happens is the sound waves come out like so but as the source is moving the sound waves start to collect or the uh, sorry the observation from the detector side is that I'm trying to draw it in this cartoon, um, so let me try a different way. Let's start again. What you get is a source which starts here and emits a sound wave like this. Then the source is now moved to this position and it emits another sound wave like this. And then it's now in this position, and it emits a sound wave like this. <clears throat> um, and while this is a very crude drawing, what you end up getting is something where, from the detector's point of view, is these circles that seem to be very close together on the right-hand side. Um, but now very spread out on the um, left-hand side. There's our detector, and there's our sword. Therefore, the observation from the detector side is that the wavelength, the distance between these crests, is um, small. And on this side, the wavelength is large. It's the distance between those two. Okay, so we can try and calculate that now. So now if we take into account um, of the source moving toward, then what you get is the measured frequency is the speed of sound, but now with a modified wavelength, a wavelength that's been measured to be different. So if it's moving towards it, the wavelength is smaller. So what we have is instead um, a uh, speed of sound 
divided by the frequency when everything is stationary minus the speed of the source divided by the frequency, which doesn't change. The frequency has stayed um, the same um, whether or not the source is stationary or moving. So in that case, if I factor out the 1 over f and flip it over into the numerator, I get a measured frequency times the frequency when everything is stationary times the speed of sound divided by the speed of sound minus the speed of the source, like so. Now, if the source is moving away, Now what you see is the wavelength has increased between those crests. And so instead of having um, uh, a, a uh, measured wavelength which is smaller, it's bigger. So that means I'm basically adding in a little bit of extra distance um, from the speeds. And so what I have is a measured frequency, which is v, the speed of sound speed of sound plus the speed of the source. So I can now write down a general equation which is the speed minus plus um, the speed of the source where the minus is moving toward and the plus is moving away from it. And again, if I look at it, um, what I have is um, the moving to, moving toward, I get V over V minus Vs, which is a number greater than 1. So F prime is bigger than F, and means a higher pitch. <clears throat> and moving away, I get V divided by V plus V source, which is less than 1, which gives me a measured frequency um, that is um, now going to be less than um, the, uh, <coughs> which is now less than um, the, st the frequency when it's stationary. Um, So now we can write down the general equation for all scenarios, which is the measured frequency is the frequency when everything is stationary, detector and source, with the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the detector divided by the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the um, source. So now you can have a moving source and a moving detector We're moving towards each other, moving away from each other. They're moving away from each other so they can move all around. Um, and then you just have to remember that for the numerator, plus means um, towards, minus means away, and the denominator plus means away, minus means towards, and now you can take into account every possible iteration you can have of moving sources and moving um, detectors. <clears throat>